In revising prose, you've read about what has come to be the dominant prose style in contemporary America, a style we've called the official style. You've also had some practice in a quick emergency revision procedure, the paramedic method, or PM. In this lesson, we're going to use TV graphics to show you how the PM works. First, though, let's review both the official style and the PM. Then, we'll put them into collision. The official style has been around a long time. It is the native language of bureaucracy and always has been. No self-respecting civil servant in ancient Rome, for example, would ask for a bribe. Of course not. But a, a little guest present, a sportula or little basket, would certainly oil the bureaucratic machinery. A provincial Greek bureaucrat living in the Egyptian town of Oxyrhynchus, several centuries before Christ, would write not, I live in Oxyrhynchus, but I am a resident of that most splendid of splendid towns, Oxyrhynchus. And the grain tax he extorted from the peasants was called the happy shipment. Much as our own Atomic Energy Commission at one time rechristened the standard measurement of deadly atomic radiation a sunshine unit. Such oily, nervy euphemism characterizes the official style from the beginning until yesterday's newspaper, which reports multimodal interface as a new name for a bus station with a bicycle rack, or reconstruction of community infrastructure for the repair of a cinder block wall. Bureaucrats are people who put a face on things. And, for the official stylist, impersonality comes as naturally as fancy names for plain objects. Never say, I think he's an idiot, or I fired him, but rather, appropriate action was initiated on the basis of systematic discussion, indicating that the termination process would be appropriate. First, put everything in the passive voice, not, I decided, but it was decided by me and then get the me out and let the action float in an impersonal construction. It was decided that. Above all, the official style is a noun style, emphasizing stasis, inaction, rather than action. The official writer makes all his natural verbs into nouns and then uses a form of to be, the weakest, most lifeless, colorless verb, so as to give the sentence grammatical completeness. Thus, this sentence needs an active verb, becomes this sentence is in need of an active verb. He plays energetically, becomes there is a great deal of energy in his play. When you hide the action in a noun like this, you lose track of who is doing what to whom, or who is kicking who. Instead of Jim kicks Bill, you get there is a kicking interaction between Jim and Bill. Displacing the action from verb to noun like this brings several inevitable consequences. First, the action is blurred. In the first sentence, the action is concentrated in a single word, and we get to that word quickly. In the second, the energy in play is smeared across the whole sentence. From there is to play runs a long, rolling letdown. Second, the sentence takes the form of is plus a string of prepositional phrases. And third, the sentence takes a long time to get going. You're tired out before you get to a word that really matters. And so we have an official style that is euphemistic, a noun style rather than a verb style, a style that hides its action in passive and impersonal constructions, that takes a long time to get going, and that is built up from is plus strings of prepositional phrases. This is the style that was waiting when modern science, and especially 20th century social science, came along looking for a special language. Scientists wanted a language that, one, welcomed a special terminology, and there was the bureaucratic habit of euphemism ready at hand. Two, they wanted a language that was built on concepts, and there was the noun style, ready to hand. Three, 
They wanted a language that above all sounded scientific, impersonal, detached, implying all the chilly yet ineluctable truths of physics. And again, there was the official style's wonderfully welcoming impersonality, a style in which things happen, but people never get in the way. Finally, the scientist wanted a style which simply gave the facts. And again, the official style's favorite verb habit, is plus prepositional phrases, was right there all along, simply telling us that something exists. And it was easy to add more data, just stick on an extra prepositional phrase. Thus, the full modern official style came, saw, and conquered, or rather, deemed the conquering mode to be appropriate. It has, God help us, become the predominant style of our time. Now, how do you revise it into English? First, circle the prepositions. Next, circle the is forms. Then ask yourself, who's kicking who? Where is the real action in the sentence? Who's doing what to whom? When you found the kicking action, put it in a simple active verb. And finally, get the sentence going fast. No long wind-ups. Here are some examples from a recent sociobiology text. There is a good deal of circumstantial evidence in support of this scheme. First, the prepositions. Notice how the rhythm of the sentence immediately gets monotonous? I'll exaggerate the effect a little with my voice to underline it for you. There is a good deal of circumstantial evidence in support of this scheme. It sounds like a list. See what I mean? The sentence comes to look and sound like a laundry list. Now for step two of the paramedic method. Find the is. Notice what a lame beginning the there is formula provides for a sentence. The perfect opening formula for a laundry list. Guaranteed monotony. There is a good deal of circumstantial evidence in support of this scheme, da da dum da da dum and so on to slumberland. Once you choose the there is plus prepositional phrases formula, you are locked into this guaranteed monotony. How do you get out? Well, ask, rule three of the paramedic method, who's kicking who? Obviously, the kicker is circumstantial evidence. Let's begin there. What is this evidence doing? Where is the action? Buried way down there in support, of course. We'll disinter it. All right, we've now followed rule four of the paramedic method. And who's the kicky, the direct object on the receiving end? This scheme. Now, how about the long wind-up opening? There is a good deal of. No need for there is any longer, since we have a real live verb in supports. A good deal of is a long-winded way to say much. Now, the completed revision reads, much circumstantial evidence supports this scheme. We have now complied with rule five of the paramedic method. Start fast. The official style loves the mindless introduction. Here are some more slow wind-ups from the author of our specimen sentence. The mindless introduction does not really say anything. It amounts to a high-class version of, uh, a fill-in grunt while you figure out what to say. Meanwhile, your sentence, that virgin rocket, has fired, lifted tentatively a few inches off the ground, fizzled, and fallen back dead on the launching pad. The official style loves verbal formulas, and we can see a good example of it here. The blah, blah is that opening. We've gotten rid of the fizzled rocket opening of our specimen sentence, and so the final before and after scene looks like this. Well, well, six words instead of 13, a large factor of 54%. The official style, whether written by a student or a licensed bureaucrat, generally runs to a large factor of 50%, plus or minus five. In your revision, you can use this as a goal if not an infallible rule. If you haven't cut the sentence in half, bash on.
But not only the scientists have embraced the official style, humanists have come to love it too, especially its spasmodic prepositional phrase strings. You see unrolling before you a sentence written by a famous medieval historian. Look at the prepositional phrases. Ugh, they seem to cry out for scrolling down in the laundry list formula. The problem here clearly is sentence shape. This is not a sentence. As we've charted it, it reminds you of a hot dog machine stuck open. Only instead of hot dogs, it keeps turning out prepositional phrases. What do you do with a hiccuping monster like this? Again, I'll try to underscore with my voice the monotony this kind of prose creates. On the other side of the coin, we see signs of the loosening of ancient ties, of corporate unity, in the cathedral chapter itself, in the falling off, in the attendance of the great officers of the cathedral, of Chartres, as in the witness lists of charters in the 1140s. As you read a sentence like this, looking at its shape, it begins to fall apart. It is as if the energy of the sentence ran down a little with each prepositional phrase, like a row of dominoes that starts to fall over. Is there any way to break out of this laundry list formula? Well, let's try. And we'll move a little faster now, since you know the moves. The first two prepositional phrases are easy. The kicker is the ancient ties of corporate unity. Anything we can do about this of? Why not the ancient corporate ties? Bleep of and unity and move corporate over. The kicking action lies in loosening. So we have this. But now we face a problem, the inevitable one for a line of Domino's prepositional phrase string. Look at the whole passage again. What about the next phrase? in the cathedral chapter itself. Does it refer back to ancient ties? If so, the two main parts of the sentence look like this. Or does in the cathedral chapter itself form part of the evidence, like the falling off in attendance? In other words, does the sentence look like this? In these endless, mindless prepositional phrase agglomerations, you lose track of what phrase goes with what. Here, I'd guess, and it's anybody's guess, that the first alternative was intended. We'll continue the revision under that assumption. The rest goes easily into a second sentence. So, the final revision. But wait a minute. How about begin to loosen? Loosen is an inceptive verb to begin with. That is, it is one whose action is beginning. Loosen equals begin to be loose. So we don't need begin to. Now, again, the final revision. And no list form needed, finally, once we've squeezed all the water out. Under the heap of dominoes lurked only one assertion and one piece of evidence for it. And how did it all turn out? Not bad. The lard factor, 50%, is right on the money, and we've excised 12 of the 14 prepositional phrases. We might ponder the lessons of this laborious revision. One, it should not be necessary. Two, it is hard work. Three, it takes all the fun out of the prose. If you have any feeling for the shape and sound of prose, an official style like this, extended over a long period, will drive you crazy. The sentences, all long and all formless, give your voice no chance to control and emphasize. Try reading first the original and then the revision aloud. To build into our paramedic method a caution against such endless, shapeless prose, we'll add three more rules. Rule six, 
write out each sentence on a blank sheet of paper and mark off its basic rhythmic units. Putting a sentence by itself on an empty sheet of paper makes you look at its shape rather than its meaning, look at it rather than through it to the meaning beyond. Rule seven, mark off sentence lengths. I know it sounds like a third grade trick, but it works. It will tell you at a glance what size building blocks you are using. You'll surprise yourself sometimes. And rule eight, read the prose aloud with feeling as if it mattered, con amore. See if you can get your voice into it. Now, all eight rules of the paramedic method are before us. Sometimes, though, it is not only the shape that distinguishes the official style, but the diction. Consider this example. Shapeless for sure, but look at what happens to shape when you revise for word choice. In the face of both the severity and continuing character of the budgetary stringencies which we thus face, equals, since we will remain very short of money, we have concluded that we must undertake an immediate and thorough programmatic review and reordering of academic priorities, equals, we must reorder academic priorities. And a review that would have been required in any event, although perhaps on a less intensive time scale, equals, we would have had to do this anyway, though not so quickly. Again, the original and the revision. Here, we didn't worry about the shape at all. We just translated the pretentious guff into plain English, and the shape took care of itself. Stylistic elements all interconnect. If one rule in the paramedic method doesn't reveal the problem, another one will. American university students swim in a sea of official style prose. No wonder, then, that they begin to imitate it. Here is an example of this imitation, an undergraduate not so much making mistakes as trying to imitate the grown-ups. Look at sentence length for a start. Let me run four consecutive sentences of this student's paper by you now. It's a good idea when you are trying to see whether you are varying your sentence length to do a bar graph. Here, all too much of one length and all too long. Or you can check length another way. Make up a sheet of numbers, Xerox a bunch of these, and you can check a page in a few seconds. It's very good self-training. Now for the first sentence in detail. This student is not making a mistake. He or she is imitating the official style. Look at the prepositional phrases. And notice how the infinitive sign, the to, into comment, joins the fun. We'll do a quick revision. We don't need William's poem because it is given by the assignment. So we have this. I'll make the rest of the changes without comment. Ask yourself why they've been made. Sounds funny, huh? The and his influence seems tacked on. How about this? Original again. A large factor of 71%. Typical of the verbal diarrhea the official style precipitates in the beginning writer. Let's do one more here. First, the mindless, fizzled rocket opening. Then, quick surgical rearrangement. 
When you've gotten here, you've peeled the onion until there is nothing left. This often happens. Revision reveals at last, as here, a banal truism. After you've gotten here by steps of careful revision, and not before, you're entitled to take the last step. Back to the drafting board for some real ideas. Sometimes revising the student official style is absurdly easy. Thirteen words instead of twenty-eight. Lard factor, fifty-three percent. We can now see why students take so fondly to the official style. It works through verbal formulas, generates a lot of words, makes a little thought go a long way. But just because it does work through formulas, it is easy to revise. Not always so dead easy as here, but anyone can do it. The paramedic method, a revision formula for formulaic prose, works fine. Let's close this TV revision exercise with two examples of what the official style does to the personality and voice of the students who use it. In the first example, a student tells us about being a counselor at a summer camp. Twelve-year-old boys like to fight. Fair enough, plain sense about twelve-year-old boys. But then he starts to metamorphose into an official. He wants to say, Often I had to stop them, but it comes out. Consequently, on several occasions, I explained to them the negative aspects of fighting. He had to keep them out of the rain, too, and the local creek as well. But when he tells us about it, it comes out sounding like a government job description. Other responsibilities included keeping them dry when near the creek or at times of rain. And by now, of course, a government official is just what he has become, an official would never blurt out something as direct as, I had to keep my temper. Instead, almost like a junior magistrate, he intones, another responsibility was remaining patient with the children. All he needs now is an attache case, a date stamp, and a staple remover, and he can start serving his 40-year stint at the desk. It's scary seeing a young personality being swallowed up by the wet cardboard formation of a bland impersonality. And here, in a final instance, is a prose personality that has been dressed in official uniform almost from the cradle. The assignment in an English One class at UCLA was simple, a one-page essay describing how people change their behavior in different social situations. The student begins, under stressful situations, the true deep-rooted characteristics of an individual's psychological framework will become apparent to those around him. No insuperable problems in melting down this lard. Under stressful situations becomes under stress. And the true deep-rooted characteristics of an individual psychological framework boils down to a person's real character. As for will become apparent to those around him, a plain old-fashioned verb will do it all. How about emerges, say, or appears? So the revision has shrunk to under stress, a person's real character emerges. Seven words instead of 20, a lard factor of 65%. We followed the paramedic method and one, reduced the prepositions from four to one, two, found the is form in the original, three, found out who's kicking who by collapsing true deep-rooted characteristics of an individual psychological framework to a person's real character, and four, coupled this subject with a simple active verb. All this surgery has, five, gotten us off to a fast start, first of all, and two, the sentence invites the emphasis of a human voice. Under stress, a person's real character emerges. A student brought up to write prose like this goop has been deprived of his linguistic birthright the power and beauty of the English language.
a chance as a new and still forming self to train his personality with and around that power and beauty. And he has also been encouraged to make conceptual thought not a matter of everyday efficiency, but a head-scratching puzzle that hides the ball not only from the other player, but from the writer himself. And most of all, he has learned how to present himself in public as a pretentious windbag. Here is sentence number two of his paper. After the instigating incident has expired, the individual in question may realize the consequences of his recent mode of behavior. I'm not sure exactly what this means, but tying it to the previous revision, we might come up with something like this. It's not the large factor of 60% that stands at issue here, but the presentation of self. You may want to sound like a pompous stuffed shirt when you're 60, but at 18? Don't do it. Life is too short. Or perhaps like a good official stylist, I should say life is too limited in length. Don't be bureaucratized before your time. Revising official prose is hard work, but with the paramedic method, anyone can do it. If you want to give it a try, perhaps this television sketch, by showing you a few tricks of the eye and ear which concentrate the mind, will encourage you to begin. 